Welcome to the Rudin Report Podcast. I'm Dave Rudin. Joining me as always, as, as we're all football again this week, is my co-host, Sean Ireland, analyst, co-host, uh, brains of the operation. Uh, uh, we got a good show planned for you Come, coming up uh, is going to be Anthony Morello, the coach of uh, the number one team in the state, Greenwich, coming off uh, a really impressive 42 nothing win at Trumbull. Sean, uh, how you doing? I'm doing great. Doing great, Dave. Uh, my upset alert, it, it was looking good for a minute. but I was, uh, I was following that. Um, yeah. I, I ended up taking Friday night off because I, I somebody else I, I had at the game. And uh, I was following the game, and it was like, wow, it's 14 to 10, getting late in the game, and Sean's going to pull this one off. Yeah. Stanford turned the ball over three times. Uh, yeah, they, they turned it over a bit. Yeah. Um, but yeah, man, I, I thought I was right on. But you were you were, you were in the mix there. Yeah. I mean, it wasn't the craziest upset pick I've ever heard, and and, right. and Stanford was competitive with them. Yeah, Stanford's Stanford. good. Stanford's yes. a good team. Stan Stanford is a good team, and uh, I I got to check who I can't remember now. I got they're on my list of uh, possible games to cover next week. But uh, Trumbull at Stanford. Trumbull, Trumbull at Stanford. That yeah. that 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 might be one Stanford could also. If yeah, they, if they could stop Rowan Johnston, they'll have, yeah. they'll have a harder time stopping him, I I think. Uh, but we'll see. The other one I was way off on, Dave. Uh, I I thought New Canaan was really going to give it to Wilton, but man, you got to give Wilton credit to you know to hang in there after the after the game they had the week before and to hang in there. New Canaan coming off a bye week, and man, they 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 had it. They had it. Yeah, you know, and, and let's start there because really there isn't a lot to talk about. This the, the main game to talk about this week. I thought I thought New Caden would win the game. I, I didn't think it was gonna be a, as one sided as you. I I, I would have said I, I don't know, a ten to four. I would have said a two touchdown win, maybe. Yeah. And uh I don't think anybody expected it to be the defensive struggle that was certainly I, I, with New Canaan's defense, maybe I, I don't think anybody expected Wilton to shut down New Canaan. New Canaan had mm -hmm. 199 yards of offense. Yeah, and, that's uh, it was that's it was, unheard of. It was a defensive battle. Uh, New Canaan ran the you know, ran, ran the ball and, and averaged under four yards a carry, mm -hmm. but you know, they're able to kind of grind it out. I know EJ Denunzio told me they wanted to take the pass away. And really, Joey Haggerty, the Wilton quarterback, was running for his life most of the game. But they had two big plays, one one that set up a score and, and one that went for a score. And uh, yeah, kind of kind of they made they made New Canaan do what Wilton, they made Staples do last week. Come come down and, uh, you know, have to have to drive to, to score to in this case to tie the game. And then uh, New Canaan was able to, to get to W in in overtime. Yeah. Uh, you know, two good teams. And Dave, we, we, we talked off air about this. Um, you know, Wilton's toughest job is going to be is to make the playoffs. But unfortunately, they got a. Yeah. Um, you, you know, froze up. the toughest you froze job up. for them you is going up. to be is to you get into the. You froze up for a second there, so we didn't hear like the last ten seconds. But yeah, you were talking about the getting into the getting into the playoffs. They they went from one to eight yeah. with, loss, with losses to Staples and and New Canaan. So I mean, yeah. and, and both by a touchdown. Not even right. where they got blown out. And and if New Canaan, I mean, if Wilton gets into Class Double M, I think they get to the semis and and have a chance to get to the championship game. The question is, you know, with the schedule they have, and, and they got Darian coming up, uh, that, that, that on paper right now looks like, I don't, I hate to say the easiest of the three games, right. but that, that might be the most winnable of the three games. And Darian's a top 10 team in the state, right? Yeah. Now. Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't get, you know, they go Darian McMahon, Ludlow, and then Shelton, you know, yeah, I, 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 that's, yeah. I mean, it's, it's ridiculous. That's crazy. It's, That's crazy. They're they're gonna yeah, they they just as easily could could end up going going five and five. I mean, no, none of those games are easy. I I don't think they're gonna get shut out the rest of the way, but they're they're gonna it, it's it, it it's crazy. You know, 
I think EJ was a little frustrated after the game. He he said uh, to me, I don't want to go off on a tangent, but, and then, you know, <laughs> we're a double M school playing L's and, do- and double L's all the time. And, and Wilton's not a traditional double, double M school there. Right. They're more like an L school, but uh, it, you know, it's, I, I feel for them because I, I think they're a really good team. I, I've been on their bandwagon all year. They have a lot of returning a lot of returning uh players from, from a year ago. And uh, you know, their their defense was outstanding. And New Canaan's got a really, really good offensive line. To hold them under four point uh, under four yards uh, a carry is something. So. Dave, you froze there. Okay, you froze on me there too. So yeah, we're back here. Sorry, everybody. Sorry, right, guys. Uh, it. I don't know. Did were you able? Did you watch the stream of the game? No, I saw the highlights. But like I've seen Wilton in person, and they are huge up front. They are big, so I'm not shocked that they, you know, they they uh, were able to s- slow down uh, New Canaan's run game. But man, Wilton's going to be in every game just with the kids they have up front, and they do have athletes. But man, it. It's going to be tough to run the ball on Wilton all year, any team. Yeah, I Staples the same way. I I, I can't remember. I think uh, Caleb Smith carried the ball thirty times. I want to say for like one hundred and eighteen yards. I, he was like just on. He was at four yards a carry. So yeah, uh, Wilton's making everybody earn it. But uh, Wilton's also a program right now uh, that that's not taking pride in coming within a touchdown. Uh, right for the top teams in the state they they need to win a game and it's gonna be an interesting game against uh against darianne which is playing really well you know that might have been the second most interesting game and and i i didn't predict the score but i probably would have almost predicted exactly what happened where darianne beat him 34 21 a team like ludlow is going to put up a couple of touchdowns on almost mm-hmm. everybody and uh you know, Dar- Darianne just uh, a, a little bit, you know, is about a two touchdown favorite o- over them. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and we said this, I think, two weeks in a row now. You know, Ludlow's offense is going to keep them in games, but, um, you know, their defense is, their defense has been struggling all year. You know, so for them to win a game, is they're going to have to score. 35 points. They're going to have, you know, like they're, they're not going to, if, if they're not scoring, they're going to have a trouble win the game. Um, but their offense is is very good. And Darianne lost, uh, I think, for the season their their safety and, and probably best defensive player Ryan Gerlamo, who is having uh, an all FCAC and, and in the discussion all all state season for them at safety. So that that was a, a big blow and and didn't didn't help uh, defending a good passing team. We we yeah. wish uh, a speedy recovery, but. Uh, you know, we bounce around. Uh, there, there. It, it was a, it was a pretty nondescript week. I wanna uh, let's let's hold off on Greenwich till till right before the break and leave yeah. Tony. But, uh, you know, I I've been on I I've been on their bandwagon all all year. But uh, you know, Ridgefield uh, plays St. Joe's, and uh, not a shock that they lost the game i you know it, it, it's still it's not the usual st joe's but it's not uh you know the uh, an okay st joe's or, or not an okay a good st joe's team is, is better than most but i didn't expect a 30 to 7 score either and and i st joe's strength is is the defense and ridgefield strength is the offense i i i thought that was going to be a one touchdown game one way or the other yeah i thought st joe's was going to win but not by this score uh, you know when i uh when I was doing the updates and I scrolled, I'm like, oh, man, it's something. And, and I don't know what happened in the game. I don't know. But I, first thing I thought, man, that's crazy. That's crazy. You know, uh, you, you don't go up to Ridgefield and do that. You know, that so credit to St. Joe's. Yep. And and, and St. Joe's gets uh, gets Greenwich this week. Uh, you know, Ridgefield, Ridgefield, Fairfield prep probably have the two toughest schedules that, that I uh, I've noticed uh yeah you know, I'm sure there are some other but you know Ridge, Ridgefield's just had uh a war every week if you want to say that Ludlow was their most winnable game and yeah. uh you know Ludlow, Ludlow's a, a, is a good team trying to get into the state playoffs so 
Uh, why don't we, before the break here, I expected Greenwich to, to beat Trumbull fairly easily. I didn't expect it to be 42 to nothing. I, I would have said like 42, 14, some, something like that. But uh, I, I, Trumbull did not post its statistics, but I know uh, I, I heard Rowan Johnston did, did not get over a hundred yards. And I, apparently Trumbull only had a couple of first downs. So I, I don't know how, you know, they, they shut him down pretty good. If, if you hold him under a hundred yards, you shut him down. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, they, they kept him in check. You know, um, w when you have a defense like Greenwich and I'm not knocking, I, I think Trumbull's running back. I think he's the best, but when you're a, uh, when that's your only option, I shouldn't say only when that's your biggest threat, your primary you can, option. Yeah. Yes. There we go. You can key on that. You know, when you get a team that's coached like Greenwich and you have the players like Greenwich has, you know, I didn't think they were going to do that, you know, hold them under, uh, you know, 50 yards, whatever it was. But man, that that's that's an impressive showing by the Greenwich Cardinals defense right there. Now they're and, and their defense is, has been playing great all year. They've uh, they've given since the Maloney win, they've given up two touchdowns in three games. Yeah. And, and it, you know, Darian last week and. Uh, you would have thought you'd you'd give up a touchdown or two somewhere, yeah. even in garbage time. But uh, we mentioned it last week how important it is like to have like strong assistant coaches. You know, if that's Brian the best, that's, your, the that's the best staff. Uh, yeah, if if Hawk is your D coordinator, you're in good hands. I can tell Bruce you that. Bruce Cunningham's right on the staff, another former oh, head Bruce. coach. Yeah. So uh, you, you've you've got two actual former head coaches and, and you've got other guys on there who, who could be head coaches yeah. if they wanted to. So Absolutely. that's uh, and, and you know what, and we'll talk to him. Tony doesn't get enough credit for what he does. I don't think, uh, you know, he, John, John Marinelli built that program and got it to, to a certain point and, and then got a great college opportunity and left. And, and he's the one who recommended uh, Tony for, for the head coaching job. And, Everybody, I think, probably, oh, I'll go to Hocker, I'll go to Cunningham. They have head coaching experience. You know, number yep. one, if Johnny recommends you, that, that comes with a lot of credibility. Yep. And, and you know what? The program has stayed on the same plane since since Johnny left. And I, I know Greenwich has uh, a lot going for it, but you don't, ju you don't just show up uh, at any program and, and keep winning. The competition's too tough. Tony doesn't get enough credit for for the job he's done. He doesn't. He he he's he, and nobody nobody disrespects him, but he, right. he doesn't get he doesn't get talked about with with the great coaches. And, and he's done. You know, the last few years, he, his coaching's been right up there with every everybody. Yeah, I put him up there with that. You know, um, I think it will come, Dave. You know, he he's only been there a couple of years, and that's not a knock on him. But you know. People will start realizing how good of a coach he is real, real soon if they don't know already. Yeah, yeah, and 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 the tendency is, you know, who's the great coaches in the FCAC? You're gonna you're gonna go to Lou, you can go to Marsh, you're gonna you go to the people who who have been there for for a long yep. period of time. So if if you're a a coach that's been there five and under years, and and there's some good, really good young coaches in the FCAC, and you know. 10, 20 years from now, uh, when, when Tony decides to step down, yeah. uh, ho hopefully he lost there for, for him, our sake and, and for Greenwich's, uh, yeah. you know, the, you, he'll, he'll be getting the praise that he deserves. Yeah. And you just mentioned, uh, John Marinelli gave Cam Edwards, Cam yeah. Edwards, huge game yesterday. Well, I, I know he I know he scored at least twice. Uh, he, he had two touchdowns. He rushed for over a hundred. Uh, uh, two, two receptions. Yeah, you know they didn't they didn't uh, hang on at the end there, but you know Cam Cam had a great day, and uh, you know I was I was very proud watching him. Uh, it's got to be great when oh, when you, when best. you coach uh, when you coach somebody in high school and and get to see that. What what's it like when when you see somebody you know you coached and, and it's, help it's hard. It's, like I've seen a bunch of kids play, you know, we've had kids go to smaller schools and, you know, I try to get the games, you know, uh, when I can, but, you know, but to see, you know, division one, you know, tailback, getting the ball, scoring receipt, like it's, it's, it's hard to explain. It, it really is hard to explain. You know, you feel like a proud father. You really do. 
I mean, it's cool for me as an, uh, you know, as people I cover and, and, and watching, and, and we have so many playing on a high level, but you, you can pretty much turn on the TV any Saturday and, and see uh, at, at all times an, an FCAC athlete is uh is on the field or as a team uh playing and then you know on sundays you, you get to watch uh zach allen and, and lucas yeah. Nyang and, and everybody so i mean it's 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 cool for us in the media so i you know for, for somebody a coach who coached these guys it, it's just gotta be the ultimate feeling it's the best yeah it's it really is a good feeling well, talking about someone who has a lot of uh, people playing in college, that's a good segue. Uh, why don't we take a break? And when we come back, we'll be joined by Greenwich coach Anthony Morello. We'll be right back. We're back, and as promised, uh, we have a special guest, the coach of the number one team in the state for uh, a year and a half running, the uh, longest show on, on Broadway in Connecticut. Uh, <laughs> Anthony Morello uh, here with us Sunday morning. Tony, how you doing? Doing well, Dave. Good to see you. Sean, good to see you, too. Coach, how, how you doing? Doing, doing well. Doing well. Good. Grinding away in the office right now with some coaches. Uh, getting ready for St. Joe's next Saturday. We're doing our weekly uh, weekly Sunday scouting routine here. So happy to take a, a little break in between. Talk to you guys. Yeah, we, can just zoom in you know, we can zoom in on the board over there for yeah, you. Over, over your left shoulder, we see your scouting report. Yeah. yeah. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Take take a real close. We did we did a real good well, job. Yeah, we'll there. zoom we, in for Joe we, there. <laughs> we, we actually decorated it for you there with some misspellings and, and whatnot. <laughs> but, uh, yeah. Always uh, scheming. Well, it's a two-week trip to Trumbull, and, and the first half of, of the trip uh, went really well. Uh, a resounding 42 nothing win <clears throat> over the Eagles. Uh, I expected it not to be a very close game. I didn't expect it to, I, I think, not to be as dominant. What, what were you guys able to do? Number one, I know you took Rowan Johnston out of the game. Well, yeah, he was definitely, uh, you know, item number one on the to-do list. Uh, I've been looking for motivation uh, these last few weeks, and we've been able to find motivators from previous seasons. And I guess that sort of comes to the territory when, you know, you're now coaching, you know, I've been coaching for, you know, four years and I've made a few trips up to Trumbull. And in 2021, it was a one-score uh, game at halftime. And in 2019, I think it was a three-point game at halftime. So, uh, you know, the goal this this week was going to be to come out fast and to start to start fast. Uh, I made a challenge to the the offense to score points of any kind on any drive in the first half. And we were almost successful in that in that goal. But uh, it's a, it's tough playing a Trumbull on Friday nights. And uh, they have a great fan base. They have not only the cannon, they had this incredibly loud siren going off uh, at Trumbull. And they, they hit that siren right at the start of the game. And I turned around to the to the guys on the side. I said, I, I don't want to hear that sound ever again. It is so loud. Um, and we didn't hear it again until the start of the second half. So we, we accomplished that goal. But, yeah, we wanted to come out and we wanted to score early. We wanted to uh, try to take advantage of some stuff that we saw on film. Unfortunately, Trumbull had some some players out, some really some of their some of their best players out. Uh, they're starting nose guard. They believe he's a captain, number 52. A uh, great player. Uh, when I saw that he was in street clothes, uh, you know, we were thinking good things for uh, our run game inside. But, you, you know, you hate to play a team that's banged up. Hopefully Trumbull can get healthy and um, and make a run because they're still very much very much in the playoff hunt right now in double L. Well, you're certainly I think they will, too. You're certainly <laughs> successful with uh, w with your goal. You're up thirty five nothing at halftime and then uh, you don't even let Trumbull touch the ball. In the third quarter, uh, Coach Hawk's uh, best defensive performance, uh, maybe of his career, though. But you, you <laughs> told us before, uh, run, running clock and, and Trumbull didn't even snap the ball in the third quarter. Yeah, we just it, it just the way kind of the clock was moving. And uh, we had a couple fourth down conversions in that opening drive and just, uh, you know, wanted to milk clock. We the 95 bridge traffic. Uh, was was not fun. It was, it was two full hours getting up and over two hours to get home because of uh, the shutdown on 95. So we were really we were really trying to get out of there as quickly as we could so that we weren't on a bus uh, at midnight. 
uh, from only a 30 mile, 30 miles away. But it was, yeah, it was a lot of travel. It was about four and a half hours of travel for a game that lasted about 75, 85 minutes in total. But you got to do what you got to do. Yeah, Coach, that was actually one of the things we'd ask you. Like, whenever we would play Trumbull, we're maybe the halfway point distance wise from you guys to Trumbull. Like, we would always have to leave early because if you're sitting in that traffic, that's crazy. And you brought up the point how it's, it's very important to get off to a good start. Does that ever, like, when you're sitting on the bus and you're in that traffic, are you like, oh, man, come on? Like, or, or are you guys motivated? Is the team motivated, focused, ready to go? It's, t- it's talked about all week. It's not something that uh, the, the athletes aren't aware of. Uh, they know that they're going to be on a long bus ride. They know they're going to be stiff when they get off the bus. So we do our best to get them prepared uh, for that bus ride. We don't mind if there's talking on the bus, but, you know, we want them more or less trying to focus on on the task uh, task at hand. And then when they get off the bus, get onto the field as quickly as you can. So we want to leave with enough time that we don't feel like we're in a rush to get our meetings done or get the field set up or anything like that. We want to get them out there so they can loosen up and, uh, you know, test out the, their footing and try to shake off, you know, shake off that bus ride. But we make an emphasis at practice Good. and during the week. Doesn't yeah. make the ride any easier, though. Yeah. yeah. I was just doing uh, a little looking, uh, a little researching before here, and uh, Vombo, George Von Velakis goes to 13 carries for 180 yards. I was just doing a little comparison uh, of him versus Rowan Johnston, just in terms of best running backs in, in the league. And there are different cir- circumstances. Mm-hmm. You know, Ro- Rowan is, is a big – bigger part of of their Trumbull offense than George's of, of yours you're able to diversify a little bit more and and, and this is by no means an, an anti Rowan uh Rowan's incredible conversation but more a pro pro George maybe not getting as much credit as, as he deserves uh you know Rowan's averaging 8.2 a carry and and carrying the ball a lot more but uh George is at 6.7 yards a carry uh and, and, and would be doing a lot more if you needed him to be more of a featured part of your offense. Yeah, I, the, uh, yeah every offense is different and everybody has their strengths and, and their weaknesses. For us, depth is uh, an incredible strength for us. And we will continue to use as many of these talented guys that we have uh, at our disposal. And that's, you know, the, the, the way I look at offense is the most unpredictable offense and effective offense is probably the best offense. Uh, you have you, you, there if you can, if the defense can take one thing away and your offense can fall <laughs> to pieces, then it's not a sound offense. To be a sound offense, you need to be able to execute against every defense every week, uh, no matter the situation. And you know we have such uh, a depth of talent between our wide receivers. I mean, just Ian Kim alone uh, stepping up for George when he went down against Maloney. He inserts right away and scores two touchdowns and helps lead us to to a victory against Maloney. Uh, it just speaks volumes for the the depth that we have and and athletes be taking practice time serious because they don't know when uh, their number is going to be called and when it, when it is called it's going to be in a, in a pivotal situation. But uh, you know, back to George. George is not going to be out on on social media, you know, promoting himself. He's going to be promoting the team. He's going to do what's asked and. Well, uh, no matter what the situation, um, I know I can count on him. And if I wanted to, you know, hand him the ball 40 times on Friday night and, and uh, you know, I certainly could have done that. But uh, a lot of what I think builds the foundation for a great program is making everyone feel valued. And, uh, you know, otherwise you'll lose your <laughs> your scout team midseason. They'll start to check out because they've read the writing on the wall and they see that they're not. Uh, going to be primetime players or featured on uh, get a game night, uh, varsity game night, and you need to have great practice reps. I don't want to go goods on goods all week long and beat the heck out of each other uh, so that we're banged up or, or God forbid, an injury happens at practice leading into our game. I want to be able to have two scout teams. You want to be able to use your depth as much as you can. You can get twice as much accomplished when your offense is on one side of the field and your defense is on the other side of the field. So, uh, you know, we want to be able to do that a week in and week out, but you have to have great practice reps. And to have great practice reps, you have to have depth of committed uh, student athletes. And, uh, you know, we spend a lot of time finding ways for 
for maybe not so much the best player, but for great players and great kids to be involved and feel like they're a part of this journey that we're on. How big, uh, how how big a draft have you gotten off that Maloney game? You know, you come down, uh, and kind of game you want to play before the sometime before the playoffs, where you you got to win the game on on the field goal last play. And since then, you you've won three games and you've outscored opponents by a, a one hundred eight to fourteen margin. And, and you know you've had it, it's not like you're playing the weakest teams in the league. It's Trumbull, it's Darian, and and Danbury's not a not a bad team. So did did has there been some some kind of carryover that Maloney game? Just do something for the team that that you guys are kind of riding on right now. No question about it. No question about it. I'd be lying if I said that 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 game was just another game on the on the schedule. That was an incredible finish. It's one that will be talked about uh, for ages in town. It, you know, it's one we can't focus on right now because we have more tasks ahead. But I think when we look back at the end of this season, we will look back at that game as sort of, uh, you know, the the turning point of 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 when this team came together. Uh, we're having fun together. Uh, definitely brought the team closer. And, uh, you know, it was good. It could have gone either way, but the, the team is definitely highly motivated right now. The players are highly motivated uh, out there on the field and they're playing with such intensity that, uh, and they're playing with a lot of confidence. So us as coaches are just going to try to get them in the right place and, and uh, turn them loose on game day. But that, that Maloney game for sure, um, you know, brought this team closer. How how playing you know playing in the FCAC too I I think probably gives you a, a little bit of an edge compared to some of the other teams that that are competing with you for in double L because you you see the best pretty much every week you you don't have any any games uh, that are I, I'll you know call them a bye week or whatever where you're just gonna roll you know you're gonna be playing. Uh, running clock in the second half and getting your subs and you you get tested all the time. Yeah, it's it's interesting this year. The past two seasons we've had you know one of the toughest schedules uh, in the state. Uh, this season we, you know, by whatever algorithm is used, we don't have the the toughest schedule um, or strength of schedule. But we have some really good teams on our on our schedule that haven't produced the same kind of wins that they have in previous seasons, you know, Fairfield prep and Ridgefield, we're talking about two teams that have by far the toughest schedule uh, schedules that I've seen uh, uh, yeah, through, across any double L teams. And yeah, there may have been some winnable games in there. I'm sure those coaches would tell you there were winnable games in there. Um, prep would probably tell you that our game was a winnable game. Um, so you know, at the end of the day, you know, the, the media is going to judge you by wins and losses as, as so they should, but it's not, should not be a judgment of the coaching there or all that they have done as mm -hmm. programs. Uh, they're going to be just fine. Uh, you know, both, I have tremendous respect for both of those programs and, and Ridgefield's turn in the corner. They're getting a little bit healthy. So just in time uh, for them to play us, they always play us hard and uh, we would, we'll, we'll expect their best uh, in a couple of weeks as well but it's so great to see teams like stanford right now in the playoff hunt and mcmahon at four and two right now mcmahon, really would, be in, in. McMahon would be in right now i i just yeah up. coach q coach <clears throat> q i mean he has been he's been with that program for a long time now and uh, he's been working so hard with his coaches over at mcmahon and those players deserve it so you know they are you know two or three wins away from from clinching a playoff spot and uh you know, I wish them the best. I, I love watching FCAC football and the more FCAC teams we can have. I think we can sell. There's still a shot at having four, four or five teams in the double L playoffs from, from the FCAC uh, division. So FCAC conference. So let's, you know, let's, let's buckle up and go. Anything those guys need, we're here. Yeah. Coach, I, I always say the same thing being from one of the, you know, those schools that are usually competitive, you know, year in, year out. And I love it. Like when, when, like you just said, when I see Stanford High, I love Stanford High, uh, McMahon, Danbury. Like when these schools are, st I just think it's so much better for the league. And Dave and I talked a couple weeks ago how people say the league is down. I'm like, wait, 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 hold on. There might be a team down, but it doesn't mean the league is down. You know what I mean? Like, you, you know, just because this team isn't what they're usually. No, but Stanford and McMahon have picked up their pace. 
So um, I'm on board with you. I, I love it when SEAC schools do well, but especially those those McMahon Stanford types. It, it's to me, it's it's very gratifying. Yeah, yeah Fairfield. Uh, you know, Ludlow's had a couple of tough losses, but but Mitch is doing great work over there too. Uh, and and Ludlow still. That's a you know he's in a tough class. That class is is you know class L is really that yeah. that's going to have too many deserving playoff teams shunned away. And then you're going to yeah. have some of our other, our other divisions that have teams that are 500 or, or worse, probably making the playoffs this year. But, uh, Walton, might, know, not it, get in. Walton might not get in if, if they, you know, get another loss or two. And, uh, they're definitely one of the, at least one of the eight best teams in, in double, uh, if, if not much higher. Yeah, I agree. I agree. That was a great game yesterday. I know it wasn't a ton of offense, you know, maybe not a ton of of highlights for for Twitter, but I thought it was two two really well played, uh, really well played game between two really well coached teams. <laughs> it was a good defensive battle. That you don't get too many of those anymore. Uh, yeah, Tony. As we're finishing up here, I, I was kind of thinking about this a little bit in terms of big picture. You taking over at, at Greenwich, and uh, you know, you came into us. Number one, you coach at Greenwich, you're you're under the microscope right away as much as any program in the state. Uh, you know, you're only as, as good or bad as, as your last game. Uh, you know, Johnny, Johnny Marinelli brought the program up and, and uh you know put it on, on a high level. And then he recommended you and not not many people knew you as as well as some of the other assistant coaches, uh recommended you for the job which, which obviously tells tells all of us something because we all trust johnny's opinion but you've kept the program going i mean the program if, if you didn't know who was coaching and you just looked at, at the last you know seven eight years of greenwich football it, it's been on on the same trajectory so you you you've uh you've done what everybody hoped but when you took over the job did you did you feel pressure that you needed to do what you've done so far just because of the expectations. Oh, absolutely. Uh, and I, and I can't tell you, it didn't come with problems and challenges and, and uh, I was taking things in the face as they were coming uh, th that first season uh, with no coordinating experience whatsoever, or head coaching experience uh, to be thrust in that position was, was frightening. And there were a lot of late nights and there were a lot of unhappy people and, uh, you know, but I, I played at Greenwich. I've grown up in town. And the one thing I knew uh, about this program were the expectations and coach, coach Marinelli, you know, who I'm eternally grateful for to this day, you know, he saw heart in me, right. He saw love and passion for the sport and for this program. And I think he knew that although I was a little rough around the edges, I could figure that part out as long as I kept this program, you know, motivated and playing that, that same kind of intent with that same kind of intensity and uh, playing for the traditions that we have in this town, that we would be okay. Um, but it was, it was definitely a challenge. My, I remember every loss uh, that I've, I've had uh, in this program. I remember them and think about them much more than the victories and uh we just try to get better, right? Humans just try to get better after mistakes. And what's been fun this year is, is, you know, last year we were down by one third week of the season. We had a chance to win the game at the end and we didn't. And this year we were able to overcome that, you know, and uh, same thing with our homecoming game last year. Uh, we weren't able to win that, but we were able to do that this year. And uh, there, there are a lot of, you know, looking back four years to that first season, there are a lot of things that I wish, I had, I could have done uh, better and uh, just try to learn from those mistakes. We didn't even have a, uh, a heavy package in, in 2019. We didn't have a goal line package and we got stood up in the quarterfinal against Darianne and I threw it three times inside the five yard line at the end of the half and we scored no points. We missed the field goal to end the half. So uh, since then we've put a lot of time, uh, coach Connie has put a lot of time into our heavy package and uh, yeah, I think we wedge it we wedge it with the best of them in the state. So it's all about just like, you know, learning through experiences. And um, I, t I tell the players every day, you know, if we, if we lose a game, it's, it's not going to be on you guys. Cause I know you guys are going to give me everything you got. That's going to be on our coaches and I'll follow my sword anytime I can uh, for this team and this program. But I, I mean, I appreciate uh, what you said, Dave. It is, it is 
you know, we were four and five in 2015. And, uh, you know, we had some six and three seasons, six and four seasons in the early 2010 to 2014 range. And uh, I, I do not think for any reason, just because the, the name is Greenwich High School and we have a lot of kids um, and we have means, does not automatically equate to uh, great football teams, uh, great football programs or championships. Uh, that comes from the kids and their performance on the field and their work on the offseason and the tremendous uh, coaching staff and support staff that that we have here at Greenwich High School. The coaches really haven't changed. Uh, we, we didn't lose anybody except uh, one coach who retired uh, from last season. So our entire coaching staff is back, um, which is not easy. Uh, coaches are hard to find. Great coaches are almost impossible to find. So um, you know, I have guys that I can lean on. I have areas of this sport and this game that I don't have to focus my attention on because I have guys that I trust to do their jobs. And um, I think it's just a really even balance. And it's all about trust from one man to another. And one lady, too. Uh, we had a, a JV player. Touchdown. Uh, yeah. Lauren Judge scored on a little QB, yeah. power, QB power yesterday. So, um, you know, there's just great, great the things happening set. right now. And uh, we're excited. Uh, we're probably – you know, we're right in the on the, the precipice of clinching a playoff spot. So, you know, knowing that we're going to be playing football past I'm gonna Thanksgiving. Go out on is... limb and I'm going to say you're going to clinch. I'm going yep, out. I'm not going right to say. Sean, Sean, mark this down. 1228 Sunday. Yeah. I say Greenwich gets into the playoffs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, we that's that's always one of our goals. And the sooner we can we can check that off, the better. Uh, as, a, as a head coach, I've never been six and oh. Uh, five five and zero is as far as I've gotten. So we're gonna try to keep that streak going as long as we possibly can. But again, the, the when it comes to this program, it is not it is not one person, it is not one player. It is, you know, hundreds of players and twenty great coaches across the board, and just you know the the whole product that we uh we try to produce in the traditions of Greenwich to to help things go, keep things going, year in and year out. Before we sign off here, I, I I didn't even check. I'm totally out of the loop. How uh, how how is the team formerly known as the the Dutchman? Uh, now now the Chargers. I'm not calling them the Garnet Chargers. I'm just calling them the Chargers. How we? Yeah, doing? that's a good question. How, I haven't you know, checked. You either. don't know either. Okay. No, we'll, no. We'll both have to do our our research. I figured you'd know for sure. Yeah, no. I I looked. We were doing okay at one point, but. John, Tony and I are both Union yeah. Union College graduates. So okay, always, I, I figured so. I, yeah. I always get my if I forget to check, I always get my updates from uh from Tony. I thought for sure you were gonna just zip off uh No, know. I got nothing. Oh, I'm, I'm so busy following all of uh all of the former Greenwich Cardinals now in college. So that'll that'll take up more, more Yeah. Half my line uh is at uh where are they at? Where's Drew? Yeah, half the offensive line from last year is at Endicott right now so we get to watch drew and and Vinny out there and uh, there's so many former players ronello and i mean Vinny cc and aj barber and jason barber i mean there's so many awesome uh cardinal alumni that are still playing football out there right now uh too many to count on on one hand but uh but yeah it's great great and you know what this hasn't been talked about very much but i'm gonna i'm gonna, I'm gonna send this out there this this senior class across the state of Connecticut did not play football freshman year. This was COVID. This was seven on seven passing leagues. You know, this is uh, for these seniors right now, they are going off of their sophomore year and their junior year. And that's it. Uh, there was whatever teaching we were all trying to do. We were, we were pairing that with like scrubbing surfaces and in pods of 10, like this was an incredibly tough four years for this senior class across the state. So, you know, anybody that says football's down or, you know, it's, you know, we don't have like as many, like you got to keep in mind that these guys didn't have a foundation to build on as freshmen. There were, there were athletes, I'm sure on in their schools that lost interest in the sport of football because there was no football season. So, um, you know, that, that work that all these programs have done, you know, I think is really paying off now. But it was it it did not come easy for this senior class, and uh, you know I'm so proud that they're that at least at Greenwich those guys are having their moment right now, um, 
because we had to do our due diligence as a coaching staff to make sure this class was up to, to the, you know, the basic fundamentals and, you know, all the teaching and intricacies that go into, go into a program. That's a really good point. I, I didn't even really think of that because I'm, I'm one who said that like the very top is not as, not as strong as as it's been and that, and that's been statewide not the FCAC I I've thought but that's a really really good point that I I never even really thought about so it definitely plays or it's definitely playing a role right now nah, in I, my I, opinion you would, yeah I, it's a great point you would definitely know better that you know coach would know better than the media so coaches always know more than the media but <laughs> uh, anyhow Tony uh, you know I when you're a good coach at a really good program, I, I I think sometimes you don't get the credit you deserve. Uh, it's Greenwich, and so you just throw the footballs out, and, and you're going to be good. Uh, but you know, I if if I I kind of alluded to this in my midseason report. You know, if you had to talk about who's going to be coach of the year right now in the FCAC, I, I think you know Mitch Ross and and you are uh, the the two deserving candidates. And like I said, coaches sometimes. Uh, at perennial winners don't don't always get the credit they deserve so you you've been doing a great job uh a tremendous job this year and uh it's gonna be a lot of fun to see how you guys do the the home stretch and then uh as you set out to repeat as double l champions and, and perhaps the number one team in the state so uh congratulations on, on everything to date best of luck going forward and, and thanks for for taking a little time out of your st joe's prep for uh and talking with us today hey i appreciate it i appreciate it guys i appreciate all you do and uh really thanks for the positive feedback all right and that's the rudin report podcast for this week i again want to thank uh, our guest tony morello i want to thank cooper boardman for the sound editing We've got a bunch of interesting games next week, and we'll be back to talk to you about them next Sunday. Have a good week.